I had this whole elaborate plan of what this video was going to be, you know, lots of cool flashy shots, which I'm sure there's still going to be a few of these. But as I went to edit it, I just wasn't happy because it was turning into a product review where when I'm really thinking about this thing, what Vision Pro is, the way it works, what it can do, what it needs to be better at, all of that has really not been that interesting to me. We've watched a million of those videos at this point. We all kind of know how this works and some of its limitations and all that. For me, what I keep coming back to is kind of this more, I guess, philosophical question. Like, is this one, is this a future that we actually want? Like, is this the world we want to live in where this is kind of the thing? And then also on the, you know, product side of it, like, is this the answer if that is the future we want? Like, is this actually the direction to go? And there's just so much to that, that instead of, you know, doing polished scripted video, I'm just kind of going to sit here and talk because there's a lot to go into this. And, you know, when this was first getting announced and, you know, I was getting ready for it, I was pumped. I was really excited for what this could be. I've used a lot of VR headsets, pretty much all of them. The only one I haven't used is the Quest Pro, uh, but I've tried and owned many of the other ones. I use the PSVR 2 all the time to do sim racing in Gran Turismo. Absolutely love it. I've had the Quest. I've used older versions that were connected to PCs. Like VR is not something new to me and these kinds of headsets sets are not new to me. So when I thought about what this was doing and what it was supposed to be doing, I was excited. I even got contact lenses because, you know, I wasn't sure how these Zeiss optical inserts were going to do. So I just wanted to be ready just in case. Needless to say, I was excited. But from the moment I first put this on to even still till now, the word that I can think of with this from both a, you know, is this what we want? And is this a good product perspective? The word that comes to mind is conflicted. This is one of the only products where every single time I put it on, I'm just like amazed. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I absolutely love what I'm doing. Like the fact that this is real and it's something that you can do and it actually works well. Like obviously you've been able to do it before in certain ways, but this has definitely been the best version of it. And I think the best vision of what it could be in the future like that. Every time I put it on, I'm just still amazed even now after you know using it for hours and hours. But then there's the other side of me who every single time I take this off, I kind of feel relieved. Maybe that's not the right word exactly, but there's something about this that when I'm using it, I absolutely love it. And as soon as I take it off, I'm very happy as well. I think it's clear Apple wants this to be their next, you know, iPhone moment, the thing that kind of changes everything and takes over and is your main computing device. And when you put it on, it makes sense that that feature could happen. Like clearly this is the first iteration. There's a lot of issues with it, but you, you see the future. I think what Apple did really well here is they absolutely nailed Vision OS, the software that it's running. Now don't mistake that for saying that the software is perfect because there's tons of bugs that I've encountered. There's a lot of things that it doesn't do like the fact that I can't rearrange apps really don't understand that but as a version 1.0 software the fundamentals I think Apple Apple killed it as usual which they have done with many of the products before it and so because that part of it is so good and I can really have windows in my world to do different tasks no matter where I am that really does give you a glimpse of what that future could be and in a lot of ways I think that is excellent you know why have to pull something out of my phone when I could just look talk see everything that I need to and it's right in front of me and you know the app selection right now is not great but as that grows and as we get even more and you know not even from Apple but even competitors you know there's going to be a lot of things you can do with it especially with let's say considering AI you have you know chat GPT in your eyes that you can see and when these get smaller they get more you know socially acceptable to wear around more normally not just inside I mean that is a that's an interesting future to think about like I think about how there's so many campaigns and you know just the messaging out there of you know try to be off your phone maybe try to not use social media as much be more connected to the real world and I agree with that for the most part I think it it would be nice to not be on our phones as often but like literally strapping one to your face so you can't avoid it I mean is that helping I, I don't know. I, I think it's a little too early to say if that is the direction that we want the world to go, because right now this is just an incredibly cool piece of tech, but the implications of it, I'm just, I'm still not sure. I mean, also I'm thinking about like, you know, iPad kids, it's kind of a meme, right? But 
do we want like Vision Pro kids? I, I don't know. There, that's kind of the conflict that I'm thinking. It's like, it's super cool that it works and I can totally see the future of what this could be. You know, having knowledge even more, not even at your fingertips, but literally at your eyes. That knowledge graph that you can have from literally any service at a looks notice, like you just literally look and you have it. That's pretty cool. And it's hard to say that that's a bad thing, but then you have that other side where it's like, do we really want to always be connected? Not only with a product that looks like something as kind of clunky that this does, but you know, once it gets better and better, you know, in a decade, 15, 20 years, is that the world we want? I'm not sure. And that's kind of where that conflict is coming from. And then on the other side, I have, you know, my thoughts and conflicts about the actual product, the Vision Pro first generation. This thing has both absolutely blown me away and completely disappointed me. Both things simultaneously every single time I use it. Like I said at the beginning, I mean, there's been a million videos on how this thing actually works and what, it, how you use it, all that kind of stuff. So I won't cover that. But for me, what has really been the biggest disappointment and the biggest, I guess, reason not to buy it is the disappointment that I had with pass through and the field of view. Now, again, this is something that's been talked about by a lot of people. And it seems like there's kind of two schools. I see people who say the pass through is great. And, and then I see people who say that it's horrible, which I'm kind of one of those. And I guess on one hand, the pass through is great compared to literally anything we've had before it. And I guess if you don't really care about camera quality or anything like that, like I guess maybe you wouldn't think about the camera pass through quality. I just can't not see how grainy and mushy and everything is because I think it was promised that this would be something you could just kind of keep on all day, at least at home and like walk around, do stuff. And while in certain situations, yes, that's possible. Like if I need to read something or if I want to see something far away, this, the, the pastor is just not good enough for that. And similarly, the field of view for me with my 33W uh, light seal is very narrow. I've tried the tricks of, you know, removing it and all that, and it, it does help, but it kind of ruins some of the immersion that Apple's trying to give you. So I don't think it's ideal, uh, but that narrow field of view combined with the pass-through just makes me feel claustrophobic, which I think is the best way to explain it. And granted, this is not the, the only time I've felt that in a, in a VR headset like this. I've felt it in other ones, but for whatever reason, because I think Apple's trying to make it feel like you're not leaving the room and you're actually still sitting here, I feel like you notice it even more. But the problem with that isn't so much that it affects like the functionality because you can still use the apps. Those look excellent. All the, you know, the displays are incredible in this thing. So actually using the Vision OS software is not an issue. That That is still excellent. But it's more so the idea that I wouldn't have to take this off and I could just kind of keep it on. Like for instance, if I'm up in the office and I have to run down to the kitchen to you know grab water or something like that. I can leave it on and I can do all of those things, but it, it just feels not quite there. So I kind of want to take it off. And I don't know, I feel like I shouldn't need to take it off for what Apple is at least promoting this to do. But I, I constantly feel like I want to take it off to do things that I could easily keep this on for if that makes sense. Now, on the other hand, like I mentioned, this pass through is actually kind of incredible. Like it does work really well. The HDR when you're sitting next to a window or in a bright environment is really great. If you pull out your phone, like everything is a little blurrier than it should be, but the exposure is great and you can read what's on your phone without having to take the headset off. There's a lot of really excellent tech here. So I'm not saying Apple did a bad job. It's just that like what I was expecting from all the marketing material and all the reviews that came out before this was released, it didn't match up. And the other thing that I was not expecting, which I think I should have expected this, but I just didn't because again, some of the marketing that Apple has been doing is the kind of isolation that I feel with Vision Pro. Yes, eyesight I think helps. I think it's actually a good idea. It just needs to be implemented a little bit better, but there's still isolation there and more than I expected, but not exactly because I'm wearing the headsets, but more so because 
I didn't realize how often I want to share what I'm doing with other people, especially someone like my wife when I'm here at home. Like I would be looking at things online, looking up articles or whatever, and I just like literally couldn't show her unless we went to the living room and like airplayed to the TV. And that it's kind of silly and you know I took a spatial video and I couldn't show her without going through the whole demo process for it to work for her face and there's just a lot of that stuff where it's like this is a device made just for me I can't share it I can't give that experience to anyone else very easily at least like this this is mine and I guess that's fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with that idea. I know a lot of people don't share, you know, what's on their phone with other people, but I don't know, in a family setting, I feel like that is relatively common and it's just so much harder to do with this. And uh, maybe you don't care about that. I actually do. I want to be able to share. And it's just, it's just not that easy with the Vision Pro. Not, not right now, at least. Now, I know I've been pretty negative about those things, but let me talk about that conflict because where the conflict comes is that I, yes, all those things I just talked about is how I've experienced this as negatives. But then there's the other side where it's literally the coolest piece of tech I've ever used, like not even close. And I think where the conflict comes is that I can see how good Vision OS is and how much Apple has done to really, you know, think about how this works and what it would be like to have augmented reality in, in real life. And that is so good that the hardware of this first generation Apple Vision Pro really lets that down. Like I want to do what it could theoretically do, it just doesn't do yet because the tech in this, you know, the cameras, all that is just not quite there. And so that's kind of where the biggest conflict is, is that the Vision OS software is just so good, it's let down by the hardware in a lot of ways. But even still, this is probably the first headset I've ever used where I have been convinced, or I, what's the better word for that? Like where what I'm experiencing has momentarily granted very momentarily but kind of tricked me into believing that it's something happening and i think one of the best ways that that happens and i think one of the best things apple did with this is spatial audio that i think is almost 50 percent of the experience here uh, maybe 50 is a little high but maybe 30 40 percent of the experience for me at least and how i use this is spatial audio for instance, in my office, I sit next to a window with a tree outside and I was using this and I was in the Mount Hood environment, which is great and beautiful, one of my favorite ones. And there was birds chirping all around and there was multiple times where I looked out the window because I thought there was like literally birds right there chirping because the spatial audio was just that good. And there's been other times where I'll kind of pin windows to certain areas. And when I'm not wearing this, I still look and act as if the window is there. It has convinced me that that thing is actually in space, even though it, it isn't. This is the first time I've had that happen. I've had some great immersive experiences in other VR headsets, but I've never like had it built into my brain to think that something was really happening. I always knew I was in you know a VR headset. This is the first time where I've you know had those convincing moments, and that's pretty cool. So I think overall, Apple nailed the software. Yes, there's a lot, like I mentioned, there's a lot of things that need to be changed here. A lot of things that need to be updated. Like for instance, I can't hand off from my phone a phone call. I can only do FaceTime, like that. that's dumb. I should be able to just take a phone call from my iPhone. But can't do that. I can't rearrange apps. That is insane. There's a lot of things here that clearly this is early days and will most likely get fixed very quickly, if not at some point. But overall, I'm just super impressed with the software, and it's the reason why I want to keep putting this on, even though I do have some of those negatives. But even on the hardware side, I think overall, Apple has kind of hit the nail on the head of like the idea, at least for the 2024 version of technology that we have. I think this this makes sense in a lot of ways. Now, yes, it is heavy. I found a uh, I found how to put it on my head and make it pretty comfortable. So that hasn't been a huge issue with me. I've tried the other band and it, it's more comfortable, but I think it's a more annoying band to use. So I just switched back to this one. Uh, and I also think that the external battery, although kind of clunky and annoying that you are tethered at all times, I do think it's the right move, not because of weight necessarily, well, actually, yes, because of weight, but also because, you know, 
theoretically in the future, this are, these are only going to get more and more powerful. And unless we get some crazy battery breakthrough, I mean, the batteries are going to stay relatively similarly sized. So it'd be nice to have the option of having bigger batteries, maybe even move some processing to this battery. You know, there's a lot of things you could do if you, you know, commit to having something in your pocket all the time. It's not the, you know, the cleanest solution having this cable all the time, but it, it ended up not really bothering me. And I think, I think it was the right move. If they would have added the battery to this, that, that would have been bad. Then that would have been way, way too heavy. And I think the question I keep coming back to is, is this the iPhone moment that Apple was hoping for? Is this going to replace all of our computing? Uh, and uh, it's hard to say. I can see the world where that absolutely happens. I'm just not sure if that's the world that we want. But more so than anything, let's, you know, this thing exists, so it's gonna keep iterating and iterating. And what's interesting about the Vision Pro is that I don't think there's been a clear representation of what needs to change, improve, and get better than this. And one of the hardest parts of recommending someone go buy this is of course the price, but I've always said price is a little subjective, like not the price itself, but the way you experience the price, because, you know, to a billionaire, this thing is cheap. This means nothing. But to, you know, a lot of people, this is super expensive. So that sense of it, it's like uh, the price is the price. I would love it to see lower, but at this point, you know, it is what it is. But because of that price, you know, it's not just an easy recommend, right? You have to think about if this is something you want. And the hard part about that is you can so clearly see where the improvements are going to be made and probably be made very quickly that, you know, the next generation of this, you know, make it a little bit lighter, make the FOV a little wider, make the pass through better with, you know, AI denoising and better cameras. Like if they did that, this thing would be so much better. And it would be absolutely, you know, worth getting over this thing. So that's what makes it difficult for me. Not because this is not really cool. It is, but I just don't know if, you know, being the early adopter on this particular one is the right move. Like, because if you think about back to the iPhone, if you were early adopter on the iPhone, you were missing a few things like MMS. You couldn't, you know, set backgrounds on your phones, silly things like that. But the overall experience didn't really change much. I mean, phones back then pretty much sucked all around. So the iPhone was, you know, it was a better, cooler version of it that was missing some features. Whereas this is not exactly something that, you know, you're missing out on if you've never used or never tried, not at this point at least. And I don't know, I just don't know if it's going to be the same situation as the iPhone. What I am sure of is that uh, I want this thing to iterate and I want it to iterate fast because it is so cool. I've already been used to how I'm using this. And at least in the time I've had it, it's basically replaced my iPad since the apps that it runs are basically iPad apps. So I haven't touched my iPad since I got this. And what's interesting is that all that talk Apple has been doing, hyping up AR for years and years at WWDC and just like, it's literally the most boring part of the keynotes. That all makes sense now. It all has been leading to this. And even though this is not perfect, I can't recommend it to really anyone. And I don't even know if this is something we need or want to have. It's just plain cool. And I keep coming back to that. The conflict for sure is there, but I'm glad it exists.